Today we will be creating some text and fonts to go with it. I want our text component to handle fonts on the fly and some additional stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are where we lastly left off. And before we add our custom text, we need to add our custom fonts. So I went to fontscroll.com and searched for a free font that I could use and chose the Josephine Sans font. For now, we're just gonna download the TTI full files. And let's keep them there until we make our component. As we made our buttons and colors, now we make a separate folder that's gonna be our fonts. Inside it, as always, we need to create a QML there. And inside it, we need to create a module. Also, we're gonna create a singleton file that's gonna be our fonts. Lastly, we need to create a file we typed in in our QML there, in my case, custom fonts. First of all, let's make it valid. And as we said, this is a singleton, so we need to add our Pragma singleton. Now the whole idea is to create some fonts that can be quickly accessible. And what we're gonna do is just create some properties that are going to be accessible with already loaded fonts. Okay, now is the time to use our fonts that we downloaded. I'm just gonna copy the ones that I think are going to be of use. So let's use thin, semi-bold, regular, and bold. And in our font directory, I'm gonna create a new directory that's gonna be called ETF. Inside of it, I'm going to paste our fonts. Now let's go back to our custom fonts QML file. In order to load fonts, we need to use the font loader provided by QML. I'm going to assign the IDs accordingly to the names of the fonts. So our first font loader will be Josephine Sans Bold, JSS for short, and we need to assign it a source. So if we look at our component, it's located here in our fonts directory, and inside of it, we have the TTF directory. So I'm just going to provide a relative path to it. And as you can see, it already found it and it's providing me with autofill. Now I'm just going to create it for the rest of our fonts. Now that we used our font loaders, we only have to create a property that's going to provide access to them. We're going to make our properties read only and the naming will be the same as the font loaders. To it, we're going to provide the name of our font loader. And that's it. Now I want to use our fonts and the best way to show it is to use it in our custom radio text button. Inside of it, until now we use the text component that QML provides. And for now, we're still going to use it. We're just going to change the font. Let's import our custom fonts. Now for font, we're going to use our custom fonts and now we can choose which font we want. Let's say JS Bold. If I launch our application, the font has been changed. Now if you want, for example, JS Fin, we can use it like this. Now as for the fonts go, we're done. But I want to upgrade our tech component and what I want is two things. I want to make it clickable and in some situations I want to use a tooltip. For example, a good idea would be to add some description for our light and dark theme. And for that, we can use our custom text component. So first of all, let's create it. We're going to go back to our component library and create a new folder it's gonna be called text inside of it we're creating a QML there we're gonna create a module and we should create our first file the name would be custom text of course in this situation versioning is important so we're gonna create custom text 01 while I'm at it I should change the name of custom fonts too now let's go inside of our custom text first of all let's make a valid file instead of an item I'm gonna use a text and I'm just gonna upgrade it. As I said, I want to make it clickable. So first of all, I need to introduce a signal. It's gonna be called click. Let's give it an ID. And now in order to make it work, I need to create a mouse area. But there are certain situations where I don't want to use that mouse area. So the optimal way to use it is to put it inside of a component and use a loader. We're gonna create a loader. It's gonna be a mouse area loader. We're gonna take up the whole width and height of the component and we need to create our component source component will be the mouse area component now when is going to be our loader active that's going to be if we want to make it clickable so i need to introduce a property that allows us to decide if we want to make it clickable we're deciding if it's active our text root clickable is true now let's go back to the component we copied our mouse area we're going to paste it here and the important thing is to have hover enabled we want to change our cursor shape if it's hovered and on click we're going to call our clicked signal now it would be nice to have a property that's telling us if a text contains the mouse. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a contains mouse property and here on contains mouse change, I'm going to change it. We're going to go back to our custom radio text button and here instead of text, I want to use our custom text. But before that, I need to import it. As you can see, all the properties that we used until now can still be used because our custom text is created from the text component. Now here, the only thing that I want is to make it clickable. Now on click, nothing happens because we didn't introduce anything. But what we could do is just console log something. 
text click and now prints out text click when we click okay nice this works the other thing that i mentioned is the tooltip the tooltip is going to provide additional information if we hover over our text so i'm going to create another property that's going to be called tooltip enabled and to use it i need to import cute quick controls i'm going to create another property that's going to contain what the tooltip should say and as default, I'm just going to put in text. So in this scenario, if the tooltip is enabled, it will just show again the same text that it's being hovered over. That can be useful in some situations where the text is punctuated. But by adding this property, we can change it. Now as for the tooltip goes, tooltip.text is going to be tooltip text. And the tooltip visibility is going to be triggered in some situations, not all of them. First of all, we shouldn't trigger it when the text is empty. Next, we should trigger it only if the tooltip is enabled. And of course, we should trigger it only if it contains the mouse. And one additional thing I need to change now is our mouse area. It is active only if the text root is clickable. Now it needs to be active if the tooltip is enabled. And here inside of our mouse area, it can happen that the tooltip should be enabled, but it shouldn't be clickable. So we need to change our on click. If it's clickable, then send out click signal. Now let's try out our tooltip. We're going back again to our custom radio text button and we're enabling the tooltip. Now as for the tooltip text, let's add some description. As you can see, now we have a description. This was for showing purposes. I don't want any of these functionalities for our custom radio text button. So I'm going to disable all of them. And as you can see, they are disabled. Let's re-enable them one more time. I want this to be bold. Yeah, it looks much better. Disclaimer, I didn't want to bother you with everything I showed until now to show it again, but I created in our main window a template with all the examples that I showed you today. You can check it out in my GitHub, it's in the description below. See you in the next one.